Hello and welcome to episode 22 of EV Brief, your weekly bite-sized podcast for electric vehicle and sustainable transport news from Australia and around the world. I'm your host, Jonathan McFeed, and on today's show, I'll be bringing you the week's news, including future electric drivetrain plans from Porsche and McLaren. There's news from Tesla, including an update on the Chinese Gigafactory, and updates on battery storage projects. And since it's Christmas, we have a giveaway on the show for listeners based in Australia or New Zealand. You can catch the details on how to enter later in the show. These stories and more, so let's get into it. Well, we're familiar with Porsche's new Taycan, and there was some controversy during the week with the Taycan receiving an official range of 210 miles from the EPA in the United States. This is significantly less than what Porsche has claimed up until this point, with expectations that the car would offer closer to 275 miles of range. In other news from Porsche, though, the company is working on a four-electric motor powertrain to debut in one of the company's next-generation SUVs. Porsche has developed this system from the ground up, with an aim that torque and traction are controlled exclusively by electronics. There are no additional sensors or mechanical components on board. The software can adjust drive to individual wheels as needed, and monitors factors such as acceleration input, steering force, and movement around the car's vertical axis. Now you may ask, what is the difference between this and, say, a traditional ESP or stability control system? Well, where ESP systems use braking exclusively to control traction, with four motors, Porsche's new system can also accelerate individual wheels, providing, as Porsche claims, the ability to pull the vehicle back on track smoothly and quickly. I can't wait to see how this operates in the real world. While we know Porsche is working on the Taycan Cross Turismo, I would say it's unlikely that this new system will debut in that vehicle and that it will essentially share the same drivetrain architecture as the regular Taycan. More likely, we'll see the next generation Macan debut the new four-motor system, as Porsche has previously stated that it will be all electric. Also, don't forget the reach of the VW Group. It's almost certain that this technology will make its way to Audi, Volkswagen and maybe even Bentley and Lamborghini one day. McLaren Automotive's CEO, Mike Fluitt, has stated that the British supercar maker will begin to electrify its offerings, with a plug-in hybrid drivetrain set to be announced in spring 2020. Fluid also states that the full McLaren range will include hybrid drivetrains by 2023 and 24, offering an electric-only range of between 15 and 20 miles. Fluid has quashed any hint of a battery-only McLaren variant, though, stating that essentially today's lithium technology is not energy-dense enough to meet McLaren's performance aspirations. More on Volkswagen's ID3 now, with VW recently releasing more specific information on the battery pack for the new car. The ID3 is underpinned by VW's new MEB platform architecture, a modular platform that will be the basis for its range of ID-branded electric vehicles. Volkswagen states that the car is developed and designed around the battery pack to ensure there is enough space for the energy system. The battery features a flat design to allow for a spacious interior, and the aluminium housing is lightweight yet strong enough to provide a secure crash structure for the battery system. The modular design comes into play with the variable nature of the battery system, with a central battery connector and cell management controller, up to 12 modules can be added. Each module consists of 24 individual cells. Volkswagen will initially offer three variants of the ID3, with a 45kWh version with 330km of WLTP range, a 58kWh version with 420km of range, and a 77kWh version with 550km of range. As you would expect, there's a liquid cooling system, and the ID3 can charge at 11kW on AC power, or up to 125kW on DC power. The ID3 is planned to go on sale in Europe in 2020, and Australia in 2022. Given the production issues faced by Porsche, Jaguar, Mercedes and more, uh, it will be interesting to see if Volkswagen can meet its production and customer delivery targets. There's plenty of news this week around Tesla's Gigafactory production facilities. As we know, Tesla was able to secure subsidies from the Chinese government, and production of the Model 3 has started in China. Trucks have also been spotted taking new vehicles to customer delivery centres and overnight, Chinese customers have started to receive delivery advices from Tesla regarding the final steps of the purchase process. The Chinese Gigafactory is confirmed to be a blueprint for future facilities including the Gigafactory Berlin, where Tesla will build the Model Y and produce batteries and powertrains. 
Tesla has begun advertising for engineers at the German facility, and it is expected that Tesla will be looking to produce solar panels at the facility eventually too. It's understood that while the automaker still has planning documents to file with the state of Brandenburg, construction can actually begin early in 2020. While many Germans seem very happy to welcome Tesla to their country, there are certainly challenges and pressures in the region, with the new Gigafactory expected to put excess pressure on housing, roads and public transportation, with an additional 5,000 employees in the region. All this capital investment, combined with the fact Tesla seems to be on top of its debt and cash situation, has pushed the share price up today. Tesla Inc. closed at $381.50, US up $23.11 or 6.45%. That's against the Nasdaq, which was up just under 1% or 79.35 index points. Tesla's market cap is now close to $69 billion, US dollars, a record high for the company. Staying with Tesla, most of the world is familiar with the Australian state of South Australia, thanks to the 100 megawatt battery system that forms part of the Hornsdale Power Reserve. The South Australian government has also been working towards creating a network of batteries across 50,000 properties, including many low-income government subsidised houses. Once complete, the program will comprise 5 kilowatt rooftop solar systems with 13.5 kilowatt hour Tesla batteries. When these systems are networked, that's effectively a power plant with 250 megawatts and 650 megawatt hours of battery storage. This is a great, great step in the right direction, and it's impressive to see some Australian states move forward on renewable technology, despite limited interest and funding from government at a federal level. The Australian energy market operator recently reported that South Australia's virtual power plant was able to step in and maintain grid stability when a coal-fired power plant in Queensland, over 1,500 kilometres away, went offline back in October. Once the system detected a frequency drop, the combined storage from over 1,000 households was injected back into the grid. Finally on today's show, it's almost Christmas, and there's plenty of new Model 3s on Australian and New Zealand roads this year, and we've had almost 5,000 listens across the podcast's 21 episodes since April. To say thank you, I'm giving away two prizes for Model 3 owners, both from Abstract Ocean. Those of you who are familiar with Abstract Ocean know the US company makes high-quality accessories for Teslas. As mentioned, I have two items to give away, a set of Model 3 door release decals and a center console tray for the Model 3. To enter, just follow these simple steps. Make sure you're following EV Brief on Twitter or Facebook. Find the competition tweet or Facebook post. State which item you would like. You can choose one only. And in 25 or fewer words, just tell us what feature you'd like to see released next on Model 3s. It could be a software update or a physical edition or an extra item in the specification. The competition is open to residents of Australia and New Zealand only, unfortunately, but it also includes the postage costs. The competition closes and the best answers will be chosen at 9am Australian Eastern Daylight Time on December 31, 2019. And that's it for episode 22 of EV Brief. Make sure you subscribe to always receive the latest episode. EV Brief is available on all good podcast networks, including iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Pocket Casts, and more. Please leave a review to show your support if you enjoyed the show. My name is Jonathan. Thanks for listening to EV Brief, and have a great week. Music